Since Josh McDaniel and David Ziegler took over the Raiders, they've done a wonderful job by going out and getting us talent and removing a lot of the issues that we had on this roster previously. Gruden was notorious for having bad contracts, overdrafting players, and kind of take, you know, square pegs and try to fit them in a round hole, so to speak. And I've been locking step with almost every move that Ziegler and McDaniel has made. You know, them bringing in the great Devontae Adams, them going out and getting the second pass rusher on the other side of Mass Crosby and bringing that veteran leadership in Chandler Jones, and also them going out and making sneaky good moves like Amir Abdullah. But to be quite honest with you, I think we might be a little early on the Alex Leatherwood train being left at this station because what I don't want to see is I don't want to see Alex Leatherwood go to one of our rivals and do better and, and play better. Now, what has kind of happened over the last few weeks has opened my eyes. All of the dead cap money, starting with the Kenyon Drake move. Now, we've given Josh McDaniel and David Ziegler a lot of credit for the success of Bill Belichick. And we don't really know what we're getting into now. Now, we have to hope and pray that Lester Cotton is the goods when it comes to right guard. Because if not, we have a pandemic at the right side of our offensive line, man. With Jermaine Illuminor hopefully holding up. And I also need to ask myself, why hasn't there been a move to bring in a Daryl Williams and a more proven starter after Denzel Good has left? So, man, I'm going to tell you guys something. Here we go. You know, I've been thinking, did we get rid of Alex Leatherwood a little too fast, man? I mean, this new regime owes him nothing. They didn't draft him. They didn't make him any promises. And they're not the ones who really ruined Alex Leatherwood. But the problem that I'm seeing with getting rid of him is, one, as I showed you earlier, the cap number and the dead money that's going to be on the books for jettisoning, you know, Alex Leatherwood and not having a contingency plan already on the roster. Now, people might say they might feel like what they have on the roster is better than Alex Leatherwood, but I will submit to you that letting Alex Leatherwood get out on the open market and go to another team who will give him the space to develop in, in a role that's more advantageous to his skill set is a really, really, really big problem for us because what I don't want to see happen to Alex Leatherwood is for him to go to a team like the Ravens. <clears throat> who's a run-heavy team with a with a running quarterback. And with Alex Leatherwood's skill set, him being such a good mauler in the run game, and then putting him on the left side of their offensive line. You know, and, and him becoming a player. And then us still fitting the bill for that particular player. So, you know, that's one of my concerns. Another concern is, is that we've given this new regime a lot of grace. We've given them a lot of praise. You know, they've gone about their business differently, and we have to respect it. They brought us Devontae Adams. It's looking like everything is trending upwards. But what we're not giving ourselves is we're not looking at them in a critical manner the way we would any other regime. We're, we're making it like just because they came from the Patriots that everything they do is going to work. And if you point to some of the Patriots' draft choices over the last few years and 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 let me be clear on this. Dave Ziegler was not the GM all those years. Bill Belichick had like the final word on all of that. So I'm not going to put that in the lap of David Ziegler. But let's not act like everything they do turns to gold. There's a lot of winning. There's a winning culture that's been established there. Some of that's happened through free agency. Some of that's happened to some of the players already in the roster. And let's be quite for real here. The one draft choice that they definitely got right was drafting Tom Brady and having Tom Brady on that roster and having guys that were willing to buy in because of Tom Brady. So, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I really, 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 really want to say that. I think Alex Leatherwood was a hardworking kid. I don't know what was happening inside of the building. But the fact that we have a deficiency up front and we got rid of a guy up front to keep journeyman players on a roster and we didn't go out and make a big splash and bring somebody in that we know is a starter, I kind of have a problem with that. And the fact that we got nothing back in return is also an issue for me. And see, the scenario that is a doomsday scenario for me is that if Lester Cotton regresses and goes back to his former form as a practice squad player, and then we have to take Dylan Parham, who has been playing left guard 
and move him to right guard and move John Simpson. And then we get the land of misfit toys up front. And then our offensive line because of Civ effectively short circuiting the Raider Equinox because we all know that if a quarterback is not protected and he doesn't give you know himself the space to let a play develop downfield, the offense can become pretty pedestrian. Uh, Alex Leatherwood, when when you when you think about what he was good at, and when you think about where his skill set lied, he was a left tackle in college and he played left guard. Some players are able to make that transition and move to the right side with no problem. Other players aren't. And Alex Leatherwood also had a deficiency when it came to his technique. And when when you have a player that is supremely talented athletically and isn't talented in the technique department, a lot of times good coaching comes into play, the opportunity comes into play, and time comes into play. Now, the one good thing I, I, I see about what was done with Alex Leatherwood was they gave him every chance to win this job at the position he was drafted to play. But the only problem is he was drafted at the wrong position. And there was a lot of that in a previous regime going on where they would take players and try to make a square peg fit into a round hole. And I think that Alex Leatherwood leaving and getting a fresh start is probably going to help him out. But I just hope that we don't look back on this next year and Alex Leatherwood is a guy that we're saying, damn, we should have never got rid of him. Damn, if we had done this, damn, if we had done that. Now, what I will say is, like I said previous, they gave him every chance to win this job. They played him. We got a good look at him. And the one thing we on a shot of a doubt that we have ascertained is that he can't play right tackle. <laughs> We've ascertained that. Now, could he play left guard? Maybe. But we know, beyond a shot of a doubt, he is not a right tackle in the National Football League. It just ain't going to happen. It's not working. Somewhere along the line, the technique and the athleticism and the position are not all coming and making a marriage together. It's not working, man. And I think Alex Leatherwood will land somewhere on his feet, man. I think he has too much talent not to do so. You know, it's a classic case of a, of, of a player being forced into a scheme that's outside of his skill set, man. And, and you know what? That's kind of the the defining that that's kind of the defining like viewpoint on the Gruden administration. It was a lot of posturing and moving guys where they didn't belong. And I think Alex Leatherwood and the Raider fan base and all of us are the worst to wear for it. Hey guys, if you like what you saw in this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Yo, argue with me in the comments. Let me know what you think. Am I tripping? Because you know, I'd be okay with getting rid of Alex Leatherwood had you traded him and, and even got back a minuscule return in, in draft compensation. Or it, had you got back a player that you thought you could work with in another part of the team. But just getting rid of him for nothing either speaks volumes to him or it speaks volumes to the fact that, man, we might have made a mistake. Because, you know, I haven't heard him being the kind of player that cause problems around the locker room. I mean, normally when you see a player that's this high of a draft pick get released like that, it's a guy who is a troublemaker, has gotten into some trouble, and you got to get him out of there like his hair's on fire. So, guys, leave comments below. Uh, I always respond. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. This is your man Wasted signing off. And make sure that you pull up on my live every day. We're going to be rolling and rocking. Raider Nation Unlimited. See you guys soon.